military velocities have accelerated into the supersonic regions, the Department of Defense has sought a highly precise positioning, velocity, and time information system that would enhance navigation and weapons delivery systems for global land, sea, and air operations. With the advent of the space age and its attendant technologies, such a system is now practical. It is known as NAVSTAR, Global Positioning System, GPS. The name chosen for this new system points out two of its major features. Global, continuously available worldwide to authorized users, and positioning, implying more than simple navigation. The global positioning system can pinpoint an aircraft, land vehicle, or seagoing vessel within 10 meters of its actual location in longitude, latitude, and altitude. In addition to NAVSTAR's extraordinary positioning accuracy, it can measure a high-speed aircraft's velocity within less than a meter per second and provide synchronized time accurate to better than a millionth of a second worldwide. GPS is the product of a joint program office with participation by the Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, Defense Mapping Agency, and member nations of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Managed by the Air Force Space and Missile Systems Organization for the Department of Defense, NAVSTAR evolved in 1973 from the Air Force 621B and the Navy Timation Programs. This global positioning system offers specific operational advantages and the possibility of tremendous cost savings. A satellite-based radio navigation system, GPS consists of three segments, the space segment, the control segment, and the user segment. In the operational space segment are 24 satellites, which complete two revolutions of the Earth per day in 10,900 nautical mile orbits. Carried aboard each satellite is the key to the NAVSTAR system, an incredibly accurate and stable atomic clock, stable to one second in over 300,000 years. A 12-element shaped beam helix array antenna continuously transmits L-band navigation signals on two frequencies to cover the visible surface of the Earth. Each satellite is identified by its own unique code on the transmitted signal while continuously broadcasting its precise position, time, identification, and other information. But until the system is operationally deployed, a smaller test constellation will be maintained. The test satellites are nearly nine feet tall and weigh 950 pounds each when in final orbit position. The main body cross-section measures approximately three by three and one-half feet. The two solar arrays, continuously tracking the sun, supply the power and are backed up by three nickel-cadmium batteries for operations when the satellite is in the Earth's shadow. The satellite is designed for a minimum orbital life of five years, but carries sufficient expendables for seven years. The satellite is three-axis stabilized by four reaction wheels, three orthogonal and one skewed. A hydrazine propulsion system provides thrust for station keeping and attitude control. The control segment consists of widely separated monitor stations, the master control station, and the upload station. Located throughout the world in U.S. controlled territory, the monitor stations are augmented pieces of user equipment, including a relatively simple omnidirectional antenna, an atomic clock, and a computer program package. The monitor stations track the satellites and extract ranging data from the navigation signals, 
which are transmitted along with satellite state of health information to the master control station. The master control station is located at Vandenberg Air Force Base during the test phase. It corrects the data for transmission delays caused by ionospheric, tropospheric, and relativistic effects to compute the best estimate of future satellite orbital position as a function of time. The master control station also corrects the orbit prediction for velocity and acceleration due to solar pressure variations and determines satellite clock time relative to system time. The data generated by the master control station allows synchronization of satellite clocks to within one nanosecond, one billionth of a second. The upload station delivers this synchronization information, orbital prediction, and other data daily to each satellite's memory. The satellites then retransmit the data to the users. The third segment, the user segment, is the reason for the existence of the other two segments. The user equipment includes 20 to 30,000 military user equipment sets, each consisting basically of an antenna, a receiver, signal and data processors, and a control display unit. By emphasizing modular design, a user can tailor receiving equipment to his specific requirements at the lowest possible cost. The modular design facilitates maintenance, repair, and integration with other systems, such as an inertial navigation system, to keep the INS precisely and constantly updated. The specific modules to be integrated into a particular user's equipment are dictated by his accuracy requirements, dynamics, and sophistication of his associated equipment. High-performance tactical and strategic aircraft demand a maximum performance package of Navstar module. Other aircraft can be fitted with less costly equipment about the size of current Takan receivers. With appropriate packaging, the low-cost set can become a marine navigator, satisfying shipboard environmental conditions. Using large-scale integration technology, a compact receiver weighing less than 20 pounds can be mounted in vehicles or carried by foot soldiers. The result is that an unlimited number of users can obtain position, velocity, and time information that is precise and immediate. The user's equipment is designed to select the signals from the four satellites of the 6 to 11 always in view that will provide the best navigation. Ideally, this would be three satellites equally spaced around the horizon and one directly overhead. Since the GPS concept is based on knowledge of the precise position of each satellite as a function of time, the control segment continuously predicts each satellite's orbital position and keeps its clocks synchronized. To determine its position by means of the satellite signals, the user's equipment must first determine its distance from each of the selected satellites. The distance from the satellite to the user equals the speed of light, which is the speed at which the signal travels, multiplied by the length of time it takes to reach the user from the satellite. Since each satellite signal is time-coded to indicate when the signal was transmitted, the user equipment compares the time T1 with the later time T2 when the signal is received. Multiplies this time difference T2 minus T1 by the speed of the radio signals indicated by the constant C and computes the apparent range, or pseudo-range, to each satellite. It also provides the synchronization of the user's clock with the satellite clocks, since each foot in pseudo-range correction corresponds to one billionth of a second in time. 
With a pseudo range from one satellite, the aircraft theoretically could be any place on the surface of the sphere centered on the satellite with a radius equal to the pseudo range. Measuring the pseudo range to a second satellite reduces the possible aircraft locations to somewhere on the circle formed by the intersection of the two spheres. Repeating the process with a third satellite, two possible aircraft locations, widely separated on the circle, are identified. The aircraft's user equipment rejects one of the points as being illogical, too far from the user's roughly estimated position. If the Navstar clock in the user's equipment were as stable as the clocks in the satellites and synchronized with them, the aircraft's position would be accurately determined at this point using only three satellites. But since atomic standard clocks are prohibitively expensive for each user, less expensive crystal oscillators, one ten thousandth as stable as the satellite clock, are employed. This results in the pseudo range measurement from each satellite being an error by the same amount, a distance that corresponds directly to the error of the user's clock. Taking the pseudo range measurement to a fourth satellite locates three more points, each point common to a different set of spheres. The Navstar's user equipment computes the correction from the user's clock error by adjusting the length of the four pseudo ranges by the same amount, expanding or contracting them until all four points converge at a single point where all four spheres intersect. The resulting point of intersection lies within Navstar's three-dimension system accuracy of 10 meters. The aircraft's three-dimensional velocity is computed in a similar manner by measuring the frequency shift, or Doppler effect, caused by the relative velocity between the user equipment and each satellite. Because the data is tied to a worldwide common grid system, all users can compute their positions and velocities in the same reference frame with an atomic time standard available worldwide. Navstar service is continuously available at any point on Earth or in near space and can be used in all weather conditions. The user segment is passive. No transmission is required from the user to interrogate the satellite. Therefore, the Navstar GPS can support an unlimited number of users. This one-way only operation also permits the user to gather positioning data from the system without revealing his position to hostile forces. The integrity of the received signals is increasingly assured because of the high jam-resistant receiver being produced by advancing technology. Every service has a definite need for the global positioning system. Army and Marine ground force missions include positioning mobile artillery, locating targets, and coordinating with Air Force and Navy units during joint operations, particularly in close air support and rapid combat surveys. Fleet ballistic missile submarines and other seagoing launch platforms can benefit from precise positioning. Important applications are seen for anti-submarine warfare, and harbor control, including locating buoys, shoals, reefs, or minefields. Advantages are readily evident for providing accurate close air support for ground forces. Reconnaissance and approach and landing at airfields lacking instrumented ground approach aids.
New tactics will evolve for use in blind and visually aided bombing. Passive rendezvous. Dropping supplies and troops with computed air release points. And controlling remotely piloted vehicles. Although Navstar is designed to satisfy firm military requirements, the system's potential outside the Department of Defense is equally impressive. New military applications can be directly exploited for numerous civilian purposes that have no military counterpart. Therefore, active liaison is maintained with the Departments of Commerce, and the transportation and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. With Navstar, man takes another giant step along the road of technological achievement. Navstar's economy, performance, and safety factors, man is converting another hoped-for possibility into a demonstrated reality. He is establishing a new constellation, 24 satellites, to write a new chapter in the story of navigation, a chapter of unprecedented precision, immediacy, and dependability. He is creating Navstar, the global positioning system.